Hello and welcome to a Blood and Pigment hobby video today. I'm Joseph and today I'm going to be working on um, adding some optional rigging to a longboat. Longboat is perfectly fine as is with no rigging at all. Just a boat easy to use, easy to get men in and out of. But it does have an option for sailing and you will use that if you use the longboat very much. And it might be fun to have some sails on your longboat. Make it a little more impressive on the board a little more of a presence and they did do this I'm taking inspiration from just a Google search for 18th century longboat I found a bunch of images of models that have this particular rig with the gaff sail and that one or two of these up front and that's what I'm gonna try to do today so my equipment is I have some CA glue some regular just white glue. Uh, I have eight and eight inch dowels. I've already pre-measured and cut some of these. I got a file, which is kind of optional. A drill with a, I don't know, a two or three millimeter bit. I'm not sure how big that is. And then I'm going to pin these uh, pieces of mass together with a piece of uh, metal this is a warlord's game pike i'm going to repurpose because i have some extras and i have a stink bug flying around pike has served its purpose that's probably the only time one of my pikes is going to kill something <laughs> wow you're not gonna die That wasn't supposed to be in the video. I got a knife, wire cutters, scissors, ruler. I've already stained these with Agrax Earthshade, so I won't have to stain them afterwards because once you get glue on them, they don't take the stain very well. All right, so this is my plan. Um, ratio seemed to be about the main mast was a little bit taller than the length of the boat. so. The boat is about seven inches long. I've cut an eight inch, eight inch, eight, eight inch, eighth inch <laughs> dowel, my main mast. I'm gonna put it about two thirds up front. And then I'm gonna have the bottom and top. This is five inches and this is two and a half inches. That's gonna be a pretty big sail. It's gonna stick out over the back of the boat. I can make the sails slightly bigger, smaller than the masts would could hold. And then I have a four inch bowsprit piece. I apologize if I use some bad terminology. I'm not super knowledgeable on that. This might be a bit long, but it'll make the boat very impressive. So that's my plan. Let's see how it goes. So pinning, uh, making these actually sturdy is a bit tough. Here's what I've come up with. I'm going to use the drill and drill straight into here, then cut a piece of this steel and basically pin them together. And then glue them and then wrap them with my thread. And then put white glue over that. So a pin with glue and then thread and then glue over that. That should be plenty sturdy. All right, plan to put this about, we want to get our height. Um, we don't want to mess up functionality too much. So I'm going to put this at about head height for models. I'll use a giant coup de bois. All right, this barely goes over his head and this is about an inch and a half up. So let's drill our first hole inch and a half up into the main mast and this is just a little hand drill I just got it at my hobby shop little set of teeny tiny drill bits I'm using the smallest one this might be an army painter kit they have a lot of great little kits I don't want to go all the way through it's almost all the way through that's good and now here's another piece. 
Now to make this the tightest match I can, this is also Army Painter product, the file has a flat side and then a ridge side. I'm going to file the middle of this dowel down a little bit so it matches up with the curve of the dowel down here. Might not help a lot, but it doesn't hurt. Just a little concave. That'll help. I'm going to drill straight into, into this. You want a pretty small bit, otherwise you'll split your dowels. You can drill a little further into this one. is about an eighth of an inch deep. So let's now trim this with wire cutters. If you have flush cutters, they might work, but you might ruin them if they aren't hard enough metal. So I have a real, real pair of wire cutters here. I'm gonna make this about a quarter inch and then I'll probably have to trim it. Let's dry fit it. pretty good. I can kind of adjust my angle as I want. I'm going to dry fit all of these and then do the gluing, I think. So we don't want our sail too huge. So I, and the example I, I was looking at had quite a bit of mast above where this top bit came in. So let's put it about there. That's six inches from the bottom and about four and a half inches from this bottom piece. Now getting the angle on this is kind of right, kind of important. To come in at an angle, but at the same point in the mast as the bottom piece. There we go. All right, here's our two and a half inch piece of mast here. I'm gonna do the same. This is prop, this is optional. Certainly we'll work with that, especially if you use enough glue, but make it a little tighter fit. Feels like good carpentry. And you should be able to just drill this straight into this one if we did our angle right on the main mast. It's a little off center, which isn't great because your dowel is not very thick. A little more depth. Cut us another piece of pike handle. Can't believe I'm 
impaled a bug on camera with a pike. All right, those are slightly different angles, which isn't great, but I can line them up. Let's trick them. I would have liked this at a higher angle like this, but I didn't do it. So make sure to drill sharp enough there. But it will do. And since this is coming in at an angle, I'm going to take some of the wood off one side of the dowel so it fits a little better. Just make sure not to make it too thin so it splits. That helped the angle a lot. All right, now we got that. Let's glue it. So this is medium CA glue. Also got it on my hobby shop. You can get it on Amazon. And this stuff is basically super, super glue. So don't slather it on your fingers or your fingers will stay that way for a long time. Push this in with the, cover the pin with glue. And it did it tight. This could have been taller or this could have been lower. This can be a pretty big sale, but it'll be an impressive longer. All right, same thing here. Actually, one thing you can do is dip the glue into the cone and then just either put the pen into the tip or just put a little glue. No glue on my fingers yet. There's the glue on my fingers. All right, those are pretty well lined up. All right, we're gonna bind that with string in a bit. I also noticed that sometimes this was a bit of a more than 90 degree angle, so I'm gonna push that up, hope it dries a bit like there, make it look a bit more rakish, I guess. All right, so that's the hardest part of the masts. So we got this piece, which we're going to put on the front. I'm going to do the same sort of deal with it, except I'm going to use the little hole they have already for the swivel gun, which now you won't be able to use. You'll be heartbroken about that. And this time I'm going to drill all the way through this four inch piece. and then a longer piece of metal into that swivel gun hole. The examples I was looking at had the this bowsprit pretty much exactly horizontal with the water line boat as is it kind of pushes it up so i'm gonna even though this has been painted for several years i'm just using an example i'm gonna trim off a little bit of the top here to bring that angle down hurts me there we go now that Good. All right. 
So now I'll trim a piece here. Maybe a little longer piece of pike. Sharp one to cut it. It's too long. Just for an eighth of an inch plus the depth of a swivel gun mount. slightly too long I mean you want to get it right the first time probably better measure it but because trimming a little bit off a of wire is a pain all right we are going to glue that on to a little bit later because we're going to manhandle this ship this boat a little and it will flop and fall off but we have everything cut trimmed now let's see how the glue is doing here it's already pretty dry so i'm just going to take this is heavy cotton quilters thread it looks like rope kind of a light brown color and it's a little heavier than regular thread so i like the look of this kind of matches the rope they have on the little pegs on the side so i am no expert in knots so i'm just gonna wrap these a lot at different angles to cover the joint and hopefully reinforce it. And then trim off and then pretty much slather glue on it to reinforce that joint. not going to put all the rigging lines up and down supporting the mast because that well, for one there's a lot of work and you have to put more little pieces in the side of your boat to hook those two and it makes it much 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 more difficult to get units in and out and it is a game and I want my pieces to be functional. That. Here's a close up of what I've got. Just wrapped kind of diagonal this way, that way, and I'm just going to put some glue on it. And might have to trim the last piece off. And you're done. And this is why I stained it beforehand because if I put glue all over this and then stain it, the stain, the wash, whatever you want to use. We'll use Agrax Earth Jig because it's easy and works. Um, we'll just we'll absorb off easily. Just putting some dollops of glue on that, and then I'm gonna rub it all around over the knot, which will hold the string in place. So I don't have to, I'm not even doing a knot, I'm just wrapping it and then just gluing it. There's that little tail that I'll trim off later. Next piece. And I'll try to do this a bit more because there's actually more area to cover being at that sharp angle.
Okay, my super glue and the thread and the white glue. I'm pretty confident it will hold up to the normal amount of abuse. and easy which is the only way to go if you want to get many pieces on your table and we'll take a knife and cut off the tails and load it all right let that dry now the next scary part is placing the mask in the boat itself. The images I was looking at put it about two thirds to the front. So I get this boat is six inches long. I aimed it four inches in right in the middle. And this is the scary part. I'm gonna use this regular drill. I don't have a hand drill with a bit this large. This is a uh, um, five thirty seconds, which is basically an eighth of an inch, but it'll be nice and a snug fit. Um, probably better to do this uh, before it's painted and then dry fit it all and then you won't be endangering your paint but I don't have an unpainted longboat at this exact moment so we're doing it like this all right went all the way through that's okay so chip the paint up a good bit and I'll just patch it. Nice tight fit. It went over just like I wanted it to. We have a nice good angle. Um, once we get this front bit in, mouse brick, that is much more impressive boat than it was. Right. Put a little more glue on those. You could tie it even or not, that'd be better, but this tends to work. Once dry, you just cut off whatever's not flat. All right, so we know that's going to fit. I'm going to go ahead and glue this now. And this is certainly not the best, but I'm just going to cover some of this, patch it with paint so it does white doesn't peek out if it has any. around the sole. All right, um, I'm gonna let that dry and then we're gonna glue the bow sprit on in a minute. But um, the next step is making a sail. Uh, a lot of different ways to go for sails. Um, you can use cloth, you can use paper, you can use this sheet foam. And today I'm going to use the sheet foam because I happen to have some of it laying around. But first I'm going to make a pattern with paper. I drew out an approximate shape that I thought it might be. And we're just going to cut out a rough shape and then trim it to fit our... actual mast. Okay. If you were a little more methodical than me, you could, okay, you could not make so many mistakes. This 
a bit of a mess, but we can still make it work. Okay, that pretty much exactly fills up the area, and we want a little bit smaller than that. We don't want it all the way out here, we want a little bit extra here so we can make this quite a bit smaller. You can measure this all out, but it seems to be just as easy to troubleshoot as you go. Okay, it might be a bit small up there. angle a little bit. There I have about hmm, half inch places there. Let's see if that works. So we got our template. Now I'm not going to use scissors to cut it. I'm going to cut it out. This is a bit <laughs> battered bone. I've had it around for a while. Craft knife to cut this out. Clean up some of these edges that are quite straight. Scissors. If you have a good pair of scissors, you're going to get straighter lines. Some space between the sail itself and the feet or the, the arms. There you go. All right, this paint is pretty low humidity here. We're going to call it dry. This can be a trick. Of course, you better glue the pen into the wood. Prop that up because it's gonna just fall because of how front heavy it is. This is supposed to dry in five to ten seconds, but when you put that much of it anywhere, it takes longer than that. I want to get it as horizontal as I can, as straight as I can. That looks pretty good. Oh, man. Drop these 
extra bits. Not quite dry yet, but we can try some. There, that's gonna look good. The valve sprit sails are gonna be pretty large. I'm not gonna go all the way out of the tip, probably just to be here. I'm gonna just guesstimate some sizes here. Um, you can do one or two. I've seen examples of both. Um, that will work for the smaller one. We're just waiting for that glue to dry anyway. Paper doesn't hurt if you're wrong the first time. About right. I bring that angle down a little bit. Well, that dries. Let's see if we can cut out something close here. I like the shape of this one as is. I think I might bring this down a little bit. You can mark through that in pen and then cut them, but I find that I have a hard time. I often get some of the pen on the edge and then I don't like it. Some wiggle room. Um, I guess I'm going to glue this in right now, too. There's no reason not to. That is set, so that's fine. Don't 
not put too much glue on. I'm gonna rip some off just so you don't blurp it all over your deck. And you can just swivel this a little bit so it's not exactly straight. So it catch the wind that I am not super knowledgeable about exactly how the wind works with the boat. And I'm gonna do it like that. Get our junk out of here. We have our three sails cut and trimmed. It's gonna make it look pretty sleek. Much bigger presence on the board. All right, let me see if I can rig one of these sails in. Let's see if that'll turn out okay. Um, my secret weapon here is a leather hole punch. You can just cut it with exacto knife. This is a bit on the large side, but I like. How clean and easy it is to get the wire through once you punch it like that. Four corners. Just going to trim this to make it nice and neat. And these are a little hard to get the very corner because you have so little at that sharp of an angle. So you just do your best. And you don't have to put one here. It's going to be better if you do. I'll see if I can make it work. But like on this one, I just let this piece hang free. It's just connected here and there. This is a much smaller sail than I'm doing currently. But see how it goes. Twist it. Make sure it cuts through well. There we go. I got a binky and whiskey. That's where I am in life, I guess. <laughs> All right. Last of thread, fire lock. All the ships come with this thread. This is just from a craft store, Joanne's. It's a little thinner. Mm. Doesn't say how thin, but elastic thread. You can use regular thread, but it's hard to get things tight. I like the convenience of the elastic. This is quite a bit thinner. It looks probably more the right length, but it's a tiny bit harder to work with. Um, I really should let that sit a little longer, but I'll try to get one of these on and then I'll be done. And it is a lot harder to thread this thin, thin stuff because it doesn't want to go through. Well, let me start the mast. So I just do two overhand knots and the elastic pulls nice and tight you can put a drop of glue if you want on it but i don't 
and I never have any trouble. Although the thicker stuff cinches up better than this super thin stuff. Trim off the excess. a lot of low ends and waste a lot but better to have a long piece you can actually tie that has tiny ends that are frustrating to work with you can i'm gonna do three overhands because i don't trust this thin stuff but yeah you can do a little more knot this stuff is thin enough doesn't matter, but the thick stuff that comes with the firelock ships, two overhand knots pulled nice and snug, will not fail. Gotta get a nice clean cut on the end of your thread, otherwise it frays and it's really, really difficult to get through those silly little holes. So the inside piece holes on the mast, I'm just tying straight to the main mast, rather than the spars, I'm gonna call them. I hope I'm right. <laughs> Yard arms. I'm sure that's correct for you. done here. Hope this hammer is close enough that I can see decently. Don't have the best setup yet. I made the sail a tiny bit smaller, I think. Had a little more space between the sail and the mass, but it's okay. I can take it off and trim it again if I want. All right, there's our main mast on. I'll put one on the front here, hopefully. This is dry enough, and we'll call it good. Now, if you just tie something up here, it'll hold all right, but you can put a little divot in the wood itself for the strings to catch in, and then it won't slide up and down as easy. With the larger thre thread, you can. You don't have to cinch it all the way up to the mast itself, and then you can kind of stretch it and have some area between them. I think I'll put some glue on this to stick it where I want it to be. Then I can give it some tension. I'm good. Now we're going to have a good piece of rope between here and there. And in this case, instead of doing a loop, I'm going to tie both ends. I have a single cord because the whole loop that far looks dumb. 
and you could get ambitious and use eyes and stuff if you want. And if you order little wooden eyes. Go up and I'll give this a couple wrap arounds down here near the front front of the bow sprit. And I'll probably put a drop of glue on this later. Gonna get a little tension, but not too much since it's a very fresh glue on this bow sprit. Creatively, you can cinch it up nice and tight. Overhand knot, pretty much all I work with, so. Two of them that locks up pretty tight. And I'll just cinch that forward a little bit to get a little more tension on it. Oh, I guess I can pull this up to get some more tension on it too. I'm going to wait to put the full tension on until the glue is set a bit more. So I'll put that one there. And that will be plenty of sail for a little long row. Not a hard project. Well, I don't know, that's probably 40 minutes. Uh, just eighth inch dowel, some foam, uh, thin elastic thread, drill, uh, the pike pin, <laughs> just a piece of narrow steel. You can use a needle too. Uh, or a, a thick needle or a pin, but you might need a smaller drill bit even than I have today. So that's how to make your long boat look a little cooler. This isn't probably as authentic for a mid 17th century, but it's more of an 18th century style rig for a long boat. But I think it looks good on the table. And let me know if you have any questions or if everything was too small to see to appreciate. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you for watching.